Okay, it should be recorded now. So, hi everyone, uh, thanks uh, for joining the Link Sunway Meetup. Meet uh, today we have um, a number of presentations by uh, Jenkins Summer Project students. Uh, we had uh, three uh, projects uh, this year. It's a Google Summer of Code uh, Outreach and Community Bridge. Um, as I said, uh, this is uh, the third part of uh, the demos. Uh, if you are interested uh, to find uh, previous parts, you can go to Jenkins Online Meetup. So uh, you can find uh, two post meetups today. We had seven uh, demos in total, and yeah, you can find all the recordings and links uh, to slides are there. Um, uh, today uh, we will have a third part uh, where we have uh, uh, two presenters uh, from uh, Google Summer of Code and one presenter uh, from Outreach. I'll spend a few minutes in order to introduce uh, these programs if you don't mind. Um, at the previous meetup, uh, Marky has already done a great introduction to Google Summer of Code. So I'll be quick. Uh, yeah, Google Summer of Code is just one of the biggest open source programs in the world. Uh, it has thousands of students and, for example, uh, this year there were almost 200 uh, open source organizations participating. And the Jenkins project is proud to participate in uh, uh, this program. This is our third year in Google Summer of Code. Um, uh, basically, the program started uh, in March um, and uh, uh, the results have been announced just a few days ago. Um, so we have seven projects this year, five projects have successfully graduated, so they passed all the evaluations and you can find blog posts with uh, result summaries uh, on the Jenkins IO website. Um, and yeah, all these projects have been presented uh, during the previous demos. Um, if you have any questions about uh, Google Summer of Code, etc., you can uh, join our Gitter chat. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the quick introduction. Regarding outreach, um, we haven't introduced it yet uh, in our meetings, but we have Tracy Miranda on the call. Tracy is the leader of uh, outreach in Jenkins. And uh, Tracy, if you could uh, say a few words about the Tracy, it would be great. Yes, great. Thanks, Alec. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so Jenkins in Outreachy. So if you may or may not know, I am the Jenkins Outreachy coordinator. Um, so I just work with folks like Matt and to identify the projects and set and find mentors. Um, and then we go through the application process. So we joined, uh, Jenkins has been doing Outreachy for the last two sessions. So we started back in 2018. And I'm happy to say up to now, we've had uh, four students who've worked on Jenkins, um, two in each round through the Outreachy program. And specifically, they've all been working on the audit blog plugin. And one of the things I, I wanted to say is that, yeah, it's been really great uh, kind of participating in this project. Well, the program, so first of all, uh, because Jenkins participates in GSOC, um, we've been able to benefit from all that knowledge um, about the internships and move that over to Outreachy. I think specifically for me, Outreachy has been really good in also highlighting other things. Like we get a lot from the Outreachy community thinking about, you know, how do we communicate with people who might have imposter syndrome? How do we change our language a bit? Um, so that's been, you know, pretty eye-opening, uh, certainly from my perspective. And as ever, it's always nice to welcome new people into the community. And one thing I just wanted to add as well is um, what I'm really happy to see is what we've learned in Outreach, we're also taking to the other open source communities and uh, under the CD Foundation, Continuous Delivery Foundation, um, Jenkins is leading the way there now to encourage other communities like Tecton and Jenkins X to spin up their own Outreach programs. So I really like this kind of cross collaboration um, that's going on and we're, we're sort of all learning and pushing things forward together. But uh, yeah, just back to today, I'm really excited to, to see these updates and just sort of see what everybody's been working on. Um, and yeah, maybe at the end we can see a bit more about the, the next round of our preaching coming up as well. Yeah, thank you, Tracy. Um, 
so I lost the focus. Yeah, so for both programs, for Google Summer of Code and Outreach, we are looking for more contributors. Uh, for example, Outreach starts soon. There will be another winter round, and uh, in Jenkins project, we are interested to apply. Uh, so we are looking for project ideas, for mentors and technical advisors, and of course, we are looking for students. Uh, same for Google Summer of Code. If you're interested, uh, we will uh, definitely participate next year. Oh, no, I think there's trust uh, that Google Summer of Code uh, will happen. And if so, we will definitely apply. So if you have any project idea in mind, if you have uh, uh, some issues with Jenkins, if you need a plugin which is missing, and if you're willing to invest some time uh, to become a mentor, we will welcome you in Jenkins community. Um, same for students, if you want to join, there is a lot of opportunities. And it's not only about uh, long programs, we also have uh, other programs. For example, um, on October 1st, uh, we will have Hacktoberfest. So Hacktoberfest is a worldwide uh, program. Basically, it's an online hackathon where everybody can uh, contribute to open source projects uh, and uh, get uh, some uh, swag uh, in return. Um, in the Jenkins project, we also invite people to contribute. So if you consider joining JSOC outreach, maybe it's uh, the best opportunity to uh, explore the project. Um, and yeah, for example, in 2018, we had a um, blog post which you can refer to. Uh, there will be a similar blog post for 2019 once we go live. Uh, but uh, what I was mentioning there was it's not something like we just submit uh, to uh, photographers and wait for contributions. We actually uh, prepare projects uh, so that newcomer contributors uh, can join the project easily. So you can see that we have a number of select projects. So this is a list for 2018. We will have similar list for 2019. And for each project, we have contributing guidelines, we have newbie friendly uh, issues, and we also have. Uh, um, code reviewers uh, who are on standby mode and who are ready to review your contributions. So we try to reduce uh, the feedback loop as soon as possible and we try to have help contributors and we invite uh, everybody to, uh, to participate uh, in October first and yeah, there are also other activities. So if you're interested, it just starts uh, next month and hopefully we will also have some on, uh, local Jenkins uh, area meetups. So it's just on-site events, uh, which I'll say part of Hacktoberfest. So stay tuned for announcements. Okay, uh, back to the today's agenda. Mm. Uh, we have uh, three presentations today. Uh, we made some changes uh, to our schedule. Um, so first presentation will be from Amude about micro management and framework uh, for Jenkins plugins. We did, uh, already did a presentation about uh, role strategy of plugin performance improvements, but yeah, he has uh, much more to show. So thanks a lot for joining us again and uh, doing a new demo. Uh, we also have uh, Arti and uh, uh, Gayatri from uh, Outreach who will present, uh, present audit log plugin. And we have a guest speaker from my uh, CVCRM project. So CVCRM is another project which was working on a uh, Google Summer of Code. And um, uh, um, uh, there was a project for better static code analysis um, in Jenkins pipelines. So we are happy uh, to welcome uh, other organization and thanks a lot for your contributions. So yeah, we'll uh, see some key, key studies. Okay, uh, so before we proceed uh, to presentations, um, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to use Zoom chat. Uh, so you can uh, just uh, ask any questions there and we will ask uh, presenters after uh, the talks and uh, also feel free to join our Gitter chat so that uh, um, uh, there you can ask questions offline and then uh, we will uh, try to answer them as well. Okay, any questions before we continue with demos? Any comments? Okay, then uh, let's start uh, with the first presentation. Are you there? Are you ready? Um, yeah, I'll share my screen. Mm -hmm. um, can you see my screen? Uh, 
yes we can okay so hi everyone i'm apude uh, and i created uh, the a uh, benchmarking framework for jenkins plugins uh, during my google summer of code project so um what um, we do is uh, we run java micro benchmark harness uh, benchmarks uh, in jenkins plugins so um, what is java micro benchmark harness uh, so it is an open jdk project and uh, it runs the benchmark code multiple times um, it does um, warm up iterations so that uh, the byte code um, uh, the code the your yeah, benchmark codes gets compiled to byte code uh, to avoid wasting any time and it provides various measurement um, tools like uh, to get the average time um, and the throughput of uh, that is the number of executions that are happening um, in a given time period um, and we run benchmarks on multiple folks to avoid the measurement errors uh, so we introduced uh, the benchmarking framework for Jenkins plugins. So what uh, this enables you to do is to start uh, benchmarks using Jenkins, and it's available to everyone through Jenkins Test Harness. Uh, we have a Maven profile in the plugin form, so you can run benchmarks locally. And we also have a pipeline step in the Jenkins pipeline library uh, for running pull request builds on CI Jenkins IO. Uh, we also support using configuration as code for setting up the instance that is started for benchmarks. So um, the, the framework works by uh, running the benchmarks directly from JUnit tests, and the benchmark classes are automatically found uh, when they're annotated by JMH benchmark, and a temporary instance uh, for every fork of the benchmark is started. So uh, this is what a typical benchmark looks like. So we have um, uh, we have a class that uh, is annotated by JMH benchmark for it to be automatically detected, and um, this extends the JMH benchmark state, which provides the setup and teardown methods. Uh, you can override them to uh, set up the folks for your instance uh, for benchmark, and you have a benchmark code that is annotated by benchmark. So you can uh, write a benchmark code here. Uh, we can also configure uh, Jenkins configuration as code. Uh, you can provide YAML files and the configuration uh, would be loaded and the Jenkins instance would be started for that. Uh, we do not yet support configuring uh, the benchmark instances with local data. That is your config.xml files. Uh, there is a Jira ticket for that, so uh, you can follow that. Uh, now, when we use configuration as code, um, we have to extend the cache JMH benchmark state instead of just the JMH benchmark states, and you have to provide the path to your YAML file. Um, this also provides you the setup and teardown methods, which you can override if you need to set up anything else. And you need to return the enclosing class, which is annotated by JMH benchmark. And your benchmark code uh, goes here, um, just like it was previously. Um, so the benchmark reports um, are generated uh, through the unit test that runs the benchmarks, and you can measure multiple times uh, through a single run. Uh, for more details, you can see the samples on the JMH website. Uh, the reports we use are written um, to the disk after the benchmark completes in JSON, and these JSON reports can be directly fed into the JMH report plugin or to JMH visualizer website. Uh, so this is what a benchmark visualize uh, looks like through JMH Visualizer. Uh, you can this uh, was the performance improvement in Roll Strategy plugin, and you can see the pull request for uh, more information about it. So uh, under the hood, uh, we basically start with the framework that starts a temporary Jenkins instance inside Jenkins Test Harness, and we have a Maven profile in plugin form version 3.46 and um, you can run benchmarks locally through that. Uh, then we have configuration as code plugin, which uh, uses, which sets up the instance using um, configuration as code. And all of these were integrated into the role strategy plugin and the new folder authorization plugin. Uh, so we have benchmarks there, and these benchmarks run as a part of the continuous integration pipeline. And um, there were uh, 
there were performance improvements to the road strategy plugin and this framework was really useful there uh, the reports were generated uh, using the run benchmark step in the jenkins pipeline library uh, there were some bugs and challenges that i faced um, the first one was a uh, test crumb issue from jenkins test harness was refused to be marshaled uh, the other thing was um, jetty uh, that was running the jenkins instance for test would leave a uh, straight thread running after uh, the server was stopped so this caused the jmh benchmarks to wait 30 seconds for every fork of the jvm after which it was forcefully killed uh, there was there were uh, there were other issues like um, uh, version conflicts with guava and uh, though these was these were fixed uh, in jenkins test harness 2.51 um, so if you want to contribute uh before that uh, i'll just uh, show you how to run the benchmarks locally so we have a benchmark runner here this allows you to set up how to run the benchmark and we specify that uh, we want the result in json and the name of the output file so after that um, we find the benchmarks automatically and we just uh, run the benchmarks so right now we are just running this benchmark uh, which uh, measures the time for generating acl objects this is specific to the rose strategy plugin and um, so to in this uh, particular example since authorization authentication for uh, jenkins is limited to one thread we set up um, the authentication for every thread that is started now let's just run a benchmark so you can run the benchmark by giving the dash d benchmark flag to maven test and the benchmark run starts so this is the configuration that is being passed um to the to the benchmark and after the benchmark completes we get a json report here so this is what the report looks like and um we can just switch to a uh, jmh visualizer for uh, seeing the actual um, comparisons of performance tests so these are the performance uh, improvements that were made uh, to the role strategy plugin uh, after the improvements of uh, the improvements we observed were up to 10000% and in this um, and in this particular case uh, the benchmarks helped us a lot uh we also have a blog post uh, that you can read um yeah so we have a blog post and um you can just uh, if you want to learn more about the framework you can uh, read through this and um i would love to hear your feedback um and you can contact me through either the road strategy plugin git chat or through jenkins developers mailing list and if you like to and i would love to have you contribute to the framework and it's available in the jenkins test harness um before i end i'd like to thank my great mentors oleg uh, runjan supun and thank you everybody okay. thank you for the presentation Uh, are there any questions? I don't have a question but I do have a compliment and that is on your slides. They a bunch of us have been noting how beautiful your slide deck is. Thank you. And I would say that it's not only about the slide deck because the content is really great. Uh, so we yeah, just provide uh, some uh, context it wasn't a full google summer of code project actually what uh, um abide presented there was uh, just a part uh, of the first coding phase so before we started uh, doing performance improvements on the plugin we needed uh, a way to estimate uh, the impact so that's why uh, the project started from the performance uh, benchmark framework um, and yeah, it was uh, the first implementation was just completed in a week or so and basically for the rest uh, of the first coding phase we were spending time on uh, examples and on improving the performance of the plugin and also on prioritizing the changes uh, because this framework is not a standalone project it was integrated into jenkins uh, components 
So it's a standard Jenkins test harness. It's a framework which is used by almost every Jenkins plugin to do uh, test automation, including union testing and integration testing. Then it was integrated in the plugin forms. It was integrated in the uh, Jenkins pipeline library. So if you use CI Jenkins IO to run test automation, basically uh, you can just invoke a step and uh, you will get it running for your plugin. And in addition to that, we did some integrations with configuration as code so that uh, quality of life for maintainers became much better uh, thanks to these improvements. Uh, so yeah, it was a really, really great change. And thanks a lot, Abide, for wor working on this project. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I forgot to add that uh, this framework has now been integrated into Jenkins Core. So all the frameworks inside, uh, all the test cases inside Jenkins Core can use it now. Uh, my seeker uh, who is on the call, he actually tried using it uh, in the very beginning, uh, but yeah, it didn't work. So maybe they did some uh, contributions late uh, to make it happen. But no, yeah, I, I was able to get it to work. It's just that um, the thing that I was trying to benchmark turned out to not be the issue. In fact, uh, the benchmark helped me discover that the thing that the hypothesis that various people were putting inside the Jenkins ticket that I was looking into were completely and utterly wrong based on the, the JMH test that was showing me that that code path was taking like less than a microsecond or yeah. less than a millisecond, one of the two. But basically, it was definitely trivial. But it, 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 it helped me um, figure out the right thing as well. And this was also tested on Jenkins Core, which made it a little more complicated to integrate. But um, from a plugin perspective, it worked. It worked just worked already, which was nice. Thanks for the clarification. And I have used JMH and other projects before, so I was able to at least jump in, and it was, and I was happy to see how easy it was to to integrate straight from um, the work that you've done. Uh, don't I can't remember how to say your name. Yeah, uh, thank you. It's Abude. Abude. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it was a cool project, cool presentation. Thanks for showing us. Thank you. And yeah, we invite uh, all contributors and plugin maintainers to start uh, doing performance uh, test automation. Because yeah, if you take a look at uh, Jenkins Jira ticket, uh, so there is now a hosting request from James North uh, for hosting a slow Jenkins plugin or something like that, uh, which basically deliberately slows down uh, some uh, operations in Jenkins. But, yeah. If you use uh, benchmark and frameworks, we can avoid uh, the same behavior in uh, uh, production plugins, and we really encourage you doing that. Oh, and I'd like to add, it, there's no better way to end an argument about performance than by measuring it. So this is a very, very useful uh, plugin to have. So thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, any additional notes or questions before we move on? I guess not. So, let's proceed with the next presentation. Uh, Arti, are you ready? Uh, is a uh, ready. Should I start? Yes, uh, you can just share your screen uh, once you're ready. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone who on the call. It's a great pleasure to have worked with uh, Matt, Jeff, Tracy, and other mentors in the project so far. Uh, since, uh, since we have many new people in this call, I would like to give a brief description about the project. Uh, the project which we which uh, we worked on is uh, audit log plugin. Uh, audit log plugin as a Jenkins plugin, which is used to audit the events that are happening in Jenkins environment for auditing purpose. Uh, for auditing, we have used uh, Apache Log 4G audit. As uh, I would like to say, Matt, our mentor, uh, has released the plugin at its version 1.0. Few days ago, and of course, uh, as we learned that now how awesome it is to contribute to open open sources, 
still there will be uh, many more continuous contrib contributions in future i hope so and uh, to my knowledge i would like to say uh, there are two upcoming uh, things in the plugin i would like to share which will soon soon will be pushed in towards uh, one first one is like uh, which is to define the audit events by api that i had some hands on and the other one was like using a descriptor and describe the classes and uh, getting the configuration of of the plugin at it is just before explaining them uh, i would like to share a short demo of the plugin as the plugin has been released earlier it is it can be installed uh, at any jenkins environment given that the version is satisfied and now I, i would like to say uh, the plugin is available in the link uh, plugins jenkins io i'll show uh, the i'll show the installing the plugin since i have already in my local i have already installed the plugin like uh, local setup already i have installed the plugin i would like to continue with it once the plugin has been installed uh, the audit logs will be shown in the here audit logs will be shown in the uh, field in in the audit logs uh, it is uh, it it shows that the audit logs are in a html format i have to mention that uh, Gayatri has worked on this feature. She gets the log written when the uh, administrator, uh, sorry, uh, she uh, she gets the log written to a rolling file in an HTML layout and exposes the file. And also importantly, only administrator administrators will be able to view the uh, check the audited informations in the plugin. Uh, let me now create a new item. and we are auditing the creation updation and deletion of the items uh, whatever the actions whichever we are doing like creating deletion everything will be audited here and creating an item name uh, hello uh, as we have created a item you can see now that is being uh, audited in that audit log screen related to this plugin uh, two things are uh, significant i would like to say that one is uh, list of events that are audited and uh, how extensible it is and the other is the places where they are audited this is uh, i would like to say and for now we say we saw a web ui of the auditor information how the auditing has been happening now i'd like to say coming to the list of uh, events that are being audited i uh, i'd like to say remember i remember a few i would share it user login and log out key or password update create user build start build finish uh, create copy delete items and uh, create update delete notes and uh, using of credentials and uh, coming to that uh, events extensibility part uh, it is uh, currently working in progress and we are looking things around uh, dynamic audit events and uh, similar things uh, we would like to say if any ideas or suggestions from your end uh, is almost welcome from most wel welcome from your side we share them in the outreach channel and uh, coming to the second part uh, the places where the audit information is sent to or sort stored once the html web ui uh, one is what html web ui we check that now i as we as i have shown we have checked it how it is happening next i would like to share uh, usual rolling log files or in some cases sending the log files to some other services uh this part is uh, configurable according to the setup and its requirements in the different organizations uh let's see how to configure them uh in manage when manage jenkins uh go to configure systems and uh, we have to uh, 
in audit log configuration we have to go to uh, we can select which appender we will require to use to get the audit logs the appender type either it will be json layout or uh, syslog layout now it is configured to, actually now it is uh, configured to store to be stored in the audit log file the file by default it will be present in the logs folder in the jenkins home directory another available configuration is send the audit logs to another server over the tcp protocol via syslog appender uh once it is conf once the configuration is done it will send the audit logs to the other services you can see the audit audit information being shown there uh we decide by means of uh, definition in the catalog on the information that are audited by the plugin uh and uh, one another way uh, that was started but left as it is considered uh, unsecure is to get the audit logs stored in the database though it is half baked uh, the pr for that is still open uh, i used to uh, post this db there this configuration will be nice with a better ux and uh, gaitri will likely update the soon with the help of mac and uh, the last time i spoke to her regarding this uh, she was figuring out how to how to do it and uh, please uh, try out, i finally i say please try out the plugin and let us know your comments in the channel it would be helpful for us and uh, that last uh, i would like to thank uh, matt jeff and crazy once again for their support throughout thank you everyone have a nice day yeah um thank you for the presentation are there any questions if not i have a question um so about uh, the external storages so since uh, you do syslog basically you already can forward this data to logstash and to other data collectors because they integrate with syslog uh, have you tried uh, this configuration already uh, uh can you please uh, ask the question again i couldn't get you so have you already tried uh, remote uh, storage for audit logs uh, as of now we have just configured the syslog server and mm -hmm. we haven't uh, tried that we'll try mm -hmm. okay uh, i don't think we've tested out any actual scenarios with it um in Jenkins specifically, mm -hmm. though um, we have used um, the 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 particular log for J plugin that we're using for syslog stuff, mm -hmm. uh, have been used extensively in a bunch of other projects unrelated to Jenkins before. So uh, it's sort of one of those it works in theory things, but we don't have uh, documentation on that yet. Yeah, because okay. I think uh, we I think there was initially there was the thought of. Um, looking into supporting like Postgres or Mongo or something directly until we kind of um, had second thoughts about that mm -hmm. later on when we realized that uh, that would yeah, have, sorry, we yeah. an audit admin essentially. So we sort of had to, so we didn't really have enough time to um, test out external log storage yet. Okay. Thank you. And yeah, another question is about audit trail plugin. So what is the, the difference between audit log and audit trail? and uh, yeah, just what's the difference? All right, I think I might need to explain this a little bit. So mm -hmm. main, the main difference is sort of like, uh, there's, there's two main differences in how it's architected. One, uh, the big difference is our actual library use. We're using actual structured logging, mm -hmm. um, which, is, which is very useful for uh, machine readable logs. A lot of people just use sort of diagnostic logs most of the time, and those are a real pain in the ass to actually parse by your logs collector. Um, but the other major thing was that uh, the audit, uh, the audit trail plugin implements itself essentially as a servlet filter and kind of just tries to um, 
intercept various URLs that it already knows about, and then set, and then we'll log those just in, in a standard sort of Jenkins log. Um, what this what what this plugin does is actually tries to properly instrument all the various listeners or creating new listeners or just directly audit logging from the invoked code, so that we get maximal amount of information that we wanted, as well as um, let's say it's a I. I'd consider this uh, far less of a hack job than some sort of URL matching based thing. Um, now the URL matching thing um, has worked well enough in the past, but I feel like uh, there's a, a lot more internal actions that can happen that don't necessarily correspond to URLs all the time. Um, so far they have mostly, uh, but yeah, those are, those are the main things. Uh, if you want to go take that a step further in theory, the audit log plugin, is a zillion times faster than the audit trail one because it's using log4j instead of uh, Java util logging, which has orders of magnitude difference in performance characteristics. Okay, thanks for the explanation. Yeah. Are there any other questions to ask him? Just a general question for me. So yeah, it's always mm -hmm. nice to come to these things and see things and I always learn a lot because it's just nice to see what capabilities um, so Art, specifically, I was just going to ask about your experience and maybe what was the biggest challenge um, you faced on kind of getting this functionality together? I can see you on mute, so I don't know if you're talking. But... Uh, Tracy, actually, uh, first, uh, first of all, communication and uh, understanding the code, uh, it was the biggest challenge I was facing. Did you find for that you relied on asking a lot of questions or did you feel there was a lot of self-service information we had for the for kind of plugin development? Actually, I don't have any previous experience like this before. This is my first time I'm doing these activities. Okay. And any other maybe comments on, like I know it's hard to compare if you don't have anything else, but yeah, any, any suggestions or things we can improve from the Jenkins side, I think will be well appreciated. But yeah, no, thanks for the work. Thank you. So in Jenkins project, we are doing um, a joint retrospective. And yeah, if you want, uh, we can just uh, try to combine it to result reach. Yeah? So we will have another public retrospective meeting next week on Wednesday. And everyone is welcome uh, to join and discuss uh, the results. Or maybe we could uh, have uh, uh, sort of all admins joining the outreach retrospective to do a fun one. And we will be happy to discuss it and uh, share experiences between projects. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, so yeah, thanks uh, for the presentation, Arti. Uh, not a question to you. Uh, so we had uh, two students in outreach this summer. Uh, was uh, the second part covered in the presentation? Um, let me think here. So we had the, um, the syslog stuff was a bit part of that. Um, we did have a lot of interesting um, setbacks related to that, partly because um, uh, even me, as a person who's been working full time on Jenkins for over a year now, is still slowly, barely understanding some of the APIs that we were trying to use, that are all UI related type of things. Um, there was that. Um, let me see what was the other thing. One second. Um, well, we showed the audit log page. That was um, had a bit of interesting things to it. Uh, See, some of the last things we were talking about weren't actually weren't um, delivered yet. They were related to the what we were just saying, the describable descriptor thing. 
Um, I think uh, we probably covered it. Looks like it sh um, since we don't really have a um, a uh, a syslog server to demo with it. Um, no, we don't really have anything else to show. I don't think because we showed you the uh, audit log um, page itself and the configuration page and the various events. Um, I'm not sure if we showed every possible event that's logged, but um, it might take a bit of time to set up. So I think. Uh, I think we covered everything. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. So then uh, let's proceed to the use of our fifth presentation. Alicia, are you ready? So there was a message in the chat that there are a lot of plot issues. I'm not really sure we will have a fifth presentation today. So. If you're talking, uh, you're muted. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. So I had a little domestic as well. Mm -hmm. I left the shower on and everywhere exploded, but I think I've been able to manage it a little. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what would be your preference? Um, yeah, we can do the presentation now, or maybe we could do it as a part of uh, a pipeline order and seek meeting, or maybe uh, another special interest group meeting. So if you prefer to move it, okay. we can do that. Okay, okay. Let me see. I think I'll prefer to move it some other time. Okay. Just feel free to share your screen once you're ready. What? Is there any other person sitting at, at, as of now? Sorry, no, okay, you all. Hey, any other person that is meant to speak as, as, as of now? Uh, no, there is no other presentations scheduled. So basically, you're the presenter now. So if you're ready, we can continue. If not, uh, okay, yeah, maybe. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I'm going to take the presentation. Let me just get done with it. Did you hear that? Sorry. Hello, can, can, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, the audio breaks a bit, uh, but yeah, generally we can hear you. Okay, so I, I'm Looks like audio is quite unstable. Wow. Is it better now? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So let me see. Mm -hmm. Can you see my screen? Uh, yes. Okay, so let me see. Mm -hmm.
So, good everyone. Um, my name is Onyem and I'm presenting um, my Google Sum of Code project. The title is um, Static Code Analysis Integration for CVCRM. So, did everyone hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear. Okay. So, CVCRM is an open source um, consistency relationship manager and it's commonly used by um, non governmental organizations and non profit organizations to manage their campaigns, to track um, how much um, respondents they've had, to send messages, to store contacts, and do all of that. Currently, um, we have over 11,000 non profits working with. Um, CVCRM, including um, Wikipedia. So the question is, why static um, analysis? So currently, CVCRM uses um, Jenkins as part of its CI, CD, two chain, but they only have um, unit tests as part of um, what you need to do before a book request can be made. So with just some um, unit tests, they found out that Sometimes they have subtle errors which the pull request reviewers do not actually get to see. So they have to find a way to see if they can be able to check those errors and also tell persons that want to contribute code that you've made these errors and also see how they can fix it. There was also a need for something that can scan the code base. Since the code base has been in existence for some years now, they needed something to scan the code base and also mention if there were errors in pre-existing code. And lastly, they needed that for um, some quality assurance too, and to improve um, their code quality. So currently, the two chain for CVCRM consists of GitHub, Jenkins, CVCore, and um, we should be adding um, SAM. SAM is the tool we are to use for the static analysis. And the code base works with PHP. So we looked into different um, static analysis tools for PHP. We looked into FAN and we looked into STAN too. But we were able to choose um, SAM because SAM had ease to configure. SAM also had discursive error messages. Also, SAM was in active development, meaning that whenever we had errors with SAM, we could actually open issues in the GitHub repo and also have the issues solved. So that was why we picked um, SAM for this um, GSOC project. So this is um, the workflow. The workflow was from a developer's machine, once the developer is able to push to GitHub, we should have Jenkins pick up the webhook from GitHub, then install Composer and run all the necessary dependencies, then also run static um, analysis, then display whatever errors we have from the current pull request as part of the Jenkins log on the PR. So I'll be discussing some of the challenges I had trying to integrate some into the already existing Jenkins and Suchin. So since the Jenkins Suchin was already in use by CVCRM, I was given like a separate environment for me to try and integrate Jenkins. So, so to integrate some. So they, they provided me with an environment, a server that had everything currently in place with the two chain in use. The only difference was this was just for trial. I could make my trials and error because they couldn't stand me having trials and errors in something they were using for actual development. So my error, my challenges with Jenkins was that I actually couldn't use the Jenkins documentation to implement static analysis on pull requests. So I had to read and read and read and read and scrap online. So the thing was, I was able to see some results that matched what I was looking for, but you could hardly find them on the first page of Google, probably on the second page. So the documentation, I think, will need some improvement, especially with integration with um, GitHub. And also, the configuration wasn't easy at all for Jenkins. 
they have to be lost and lost and of configuration before you can get your Jenkins to work. And besides, there there aren't any descriptive error messages. Just have to like configure, then try to make make a pull request and see if you had your changes reflected. So so far, am I clear enough? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so apart from Jenkins, I also had um, some challenges integrating SAM and the code base. For one, my, mention, my mentors mentioned that it's usually very difficult to integrate static analysis tools to large code bases because sometimes static analysis tools fail to analyze the code base at one point or the other. So while trying to run SAM on the CVCRM core code base, I had some errors. But the good thing was that whenever I opened issues on the errors on the SAM repository, the good people at SAM were able to fix the box. So SAM is used by Vimeo. Vimeo is um, the video sharing platform like um, YouTube. So since SAM is used by Vimeo, the developers were active and we are always ready to fix any er errors encountered. So apart from the box and having them fixed, so SAM can actually run on the core repository. Another issue was the baseline. So it was very obvious to us that we must have errors in a code base. Since the code base consists of thousands of lines of code and different folders, we must have errors. But the issue was, is there a way we could have these errors but still have the test passing? Because definitely there, there wasn't any way the developers of CVCRM could fix all the errors shown by um, Sam before continuing what they were doing. CVCRM was in active use. We had bugs that we are actually needed, like bugs that we had to fix, and also had features we had to implement. So there was no way we could wait for to handle all the errors thrown by Sam before we could continue. So fortunately, Sam had a baseline feature which allowed developers to kind of grandfather errors that have already been thrown. So these errors could actually be there and Sam would pass. Sam would only look at errors presently in your current pull request. So that was one challenge, but Sam already had a way to control that using their baseline feature. When we were able to fix the baseline feature, another issue we had was false negatives. We were having thousands and thousands of errors from our static analysis. But it turns out that most of the errors spoke about um, dependencies they were missing, like missing class and missing functions. But when my mentors were able to look at the, the code base, they found out that those were false negatives as those classes were actually in existence in our code base. So they mentioned there was need for us to have a bootstrap file or an autoloader file that would pull in all the dependencies before static um, analysis was done. So we could reduce the false negatives and then have some errors that actually were through. So when I had the box fixed and the baseline feature implemented and also had an autoloader file configured to reduce false negatives, we were able to move um, on with the project. So with that fixed, we were able to have some failing tests, and when we were able to fix those tests, we were able to have um, tests that we are passing. So that was actually what my Google Summer of Code project was, trying to integrate SAM, which is a static analysis tool, into the civic core code base. So before pull requests are merged, SAM can be able to analyze the code to make sure we don't miss out on sub-tool errors. So in conclusion, I think I've come to love um, the open source culture because my mentors were full of empathy and they were also very patient with me. Most times I was stuck with blogs for weeks and they were able to encourage me to try to figure things out and also to give me one or two tips. Also, everyone in my organization was also very, very helpful. Um, I also wish to thank um, the Jenkins g team for giving me opportunity to present um, my project. I'll be sharing links to my final report in case anyone wants to have a look too. So thank you.
Yeah. Thank you too for your presentation. Um, are there any questions? Not a question, but yeah, I just wanted to say, um, you know, if, if I spill a bit of water myself before presentation, I, I'm a mess. So congratulations on, on doing that, given given the flooding. Um, and yeah, and I've just found that really interesting. I wasn't familiar with Psalm. And I know there's always challenges when you're trying to integrate things. Uh, you know, Jenkins, Psalm, um, dealing with all of that. So yeah, really nice to, to learn about this. And I look forward to the report. Okay, thank you very much, Miranda. Yeah. Uh, plus 100. Uh, one question, uh, do you use any specific Jenkins plugins uh, to integrate with Psalm? Okay, the, the, the plugins I was able to use. So yes. I had um, the, the Jenkins um, PR Builder. We had the Jenkins pull request builder. I think that was the, the major plugin I was able to use for GitHub, the Jenkins pull request builder for GitHub. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, so, that was on the plugin use. Okay, so you don't use uh, Jenkins pipeline so far, right? No, 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 no pipeline so far, just the pull press builder. Okay, yeah, thank you. And uh, for Psalm report publishing, uh, did you use anything? Sorry, I didn't get that. So uh, after executing Psalm, uh, were you publishing? Um, um, I, I'm sorry, I should share this with my user. Uh, when uh, running Psalm, um, so it generates a report uh, of the static analysis results. Uh, were you publishing it somehow in Jenkins web interface? Yes, I think um, by default, Jenkins allowed me to see the log somewhere. I don't know mm -hmm. if I could show, okay. No need, I think Jenkins just displayed it. I, I, I use the default um, logs from Jenkins to see uh -huh. um, the output. Okay. Mm, yeah, thank you. Well, if some produces enough information uh, in the logs, it's, yeah, it's a really nice way to use it. Okay. Are there any other questions? I think the question is not clear enough. Can anyone help me repeat the question, please? Yeah, I also didn't hear the question. Uh, so is it possible to create a Jenkins I, job for what? Uh, the question is like the specific job uh, has like a specific uh, log to be just set up. Right? So is it possible to uh, do in a, like a Jenkins to make like separate log for specific or bottom bit? So about uh, specific logs. So yeah, if you use Jenkins pipeline, you can retrieve logs for every step. So for example, if you run Psalm or and uh, any other tool um, from CLI, you can get a, a separate log uh, just for this execution. You can access only this specific log uh, from REST API. Uh, and yeah, if you use tools like, uh, well, basically Lotion or just a, a on a pipeline stage view, you can uh, see uh, specific logs in the web UI. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, any other questions? Yeah, so if no questions, yeah, thanks a lot for your presentation. And yeah, thanks a lot for your hard work on uh, CVCRM. Uh, yeah, I would like to say thanks to all students who presented today and to all students who presented in previous sessions. Um, yeah, as usual, we will be publishing recording on the Jenkins YouTube channel. So you will be able to see the recording of the session. And if you have any questions, just uh, join our Gitter chat and uh, we will be able uh, to answer the questions there.
Okay. So yeah, thanks all. Are there any other questions or additional comments before we close down uh, the session? Okay, if not, uh, just uh, thanks uh, to everyone. I'll stop the recording. Um, and yeah, see you at the next Jenkins Online Meetup, maybe in uh, a few weeks. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Great presentations, everyone. Thanks.